I'm so grateful that you guys are here this morning. I love Mother's Day. Uh, I was so excited for Cheryl this week, you know, Mother's Day. And I told her, I said, hey, listen, Mother's Day is Sunday, so you, you need to get that laundry done on Saturday so that you can... <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, if I had said that, I, there would have been a funeral today. I would have... Your pastor would have been deceased, so in a shallow grave in the backyard. But it's so good. Uh, didn't, you, didn't you enjoy worship this morning? I don't know. I, I love, yes, I love it. Woo. Uh, just want to remind you, you know, one of the ways that we worship also, we don't talk about it a lot. We don't pass the plates anymore, but we continue to worship through our tithes and offering. Uh, our app is down this morning. We had a problem with our app, but I uh, just want to remind you uh, to continue to worship through our giving as well. There's some places you can give. You can give online. Uh, but it is so good to be here. We are in this, uh, I'm in this uh, third week of, I think it's third week of this message series that I called Kingdom and, and the Kingdom, and really just talking about this concept of the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Heaven. It's mentioned a ton in Scripture. It's mentioned um, several times uh, specifically by Jesus himself. Uh, in fact, the time after Easter, we, you know, we celebrated Easter not too long ago, and from the time that he uh, died and then rose from the grave uh, and then came back, he appeared to his disciples on multiple occasions. He appeared to different different people, um, and in that, there was, for a period of about six weeks, which is, which is pretty amazing, because I think sometimes you think, okay, well, he, he rose from the dead, and then he just disappeared, uh, you know, and then nobody saw him again, but he actually hung around, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> but he hung, around, he hung around about six weeks after his resurrection, and so in that period of time, he spent a ton of time with the disciples preparing these 11 men who really changed history. Uh, like, nothing has impacted our world history uh, like the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it just hasn't. It, 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 ha- it has, has had ripples across centuries, and he really spent the six weeks of time preparing his 11 disciples to go out and, sh- and share the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ and to share this message. And, he, and during that time, uh, he spoke a lot about the kingdom. He, it, it, he spent that six weeks, this last, he knew that he was going to be departed, and he knew that, hey, I've got to instill in these guys uh, the importance of the kingdom. And so, and I know that kingdom, that doesn't resonate with us. And, I, and I've talked about that before. I talked about that week one, that we don't, you know, we don't live in, in a country where there is a king and a queen and, and royalty and, and that type of thing. Americans just don't get that concept. It, it, it's, it's, it's foreign to us. Uh, but there's this concept of kingdom. And, and the kingdom, uh, what we shared in week one was that, it, that it's both right, it, it's now and not yet. Right? So the kingdom is right now and not yet. So how can that be? How can, be, how can this kingdom of God be here now? Because when Jesus came, the kingdom came with him, right? When he, when he was here, he, he, the kingdom was here, and, and the kingdom began, but it's not yet. It's not done yet. It's not complete. Uh, and someday, Jesus will come back again and, and make his kingdom complete. And, um, you know, we, we shared some of these. Jesus talked a lot in stories. So if you're new to church, or maybe it's your first time, or maybe you're just here because your mom Mom wanted you to come to church, and we appreciate that. Thank you, Mom. Uh, but, uh, you know, for whatever reason, maybe you're, you've, you've not heard a lot about church, you haven't heard a lot about what was going on with church, and you're just here because somebody invited you. Um, Jesus talked a lot in stories, and he, and he gave these different stories. Uh, they're called parables, but he spoke in these parables uh, all, throughout, all throughout Scripture, and he would say things like, the kingdom of heaven is like, and then he would tell a story. The kingdom of heaven is like, and then he would share this story about what the kingdom of heaven is like. And we've talked about some of those. We can't, we don't have time to talk through all that he shared, but I talked to you last week about the sower and the seed. Like there's this, it's like the farmer that's sowing seed and some of the seed falls on rocky soil and some it falls in. And then he said, it's like a field that uh, has wheat and weeds in it at the same time. And he, and so we have this picture of the kingdom that that not, not everyone will receive the gospel. Not everybody's going to go, oh, yeah, that makes sense to me, and I believe Jesus is who he said he was. And, and uh, like some of these people that are going to do today that are going to be baptized who are making that commitment that's saying, hey, I believe he is who he said he was, and, uh, and I'm going to follow. Some of us not, so the seed's going to fall all over the place. And the fact of the matter is there are going to be some of us that are weeds and some of us that are wheat. In, in, in the field. Some of us who are going to be followers of Jesus Christ and some of us just who, who aren't. Uh, and, and you really fall in one of those two camps. 
And so we're going to be looking at just three verses this morning uh, of another parable that Jesus told. And, and, and I know some of you are excited because you thought this was going to be short because it's only three verses, but there's a lot in these three verses. So don't get too excited. Uh, it's, going to be, it's not going to be long, though. Uh, uh, but here he, he t- tells another parable. And it's in Matthew chapter 13. A lot of these parables fall in Matthew chapter 13, if you want to go back and read them for yourself. And this one, he, he, tells, uh, he tells another story, and he, he begins it like he does all of his stories. The kingdom of heaven is like, and then he goes on, it's like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had to buy that field. So the guy's walking in this field. He stumbles across this incredible treasure. We don't know what it is. Jesus said, tell us what it is. I don't know if it's a pearl. Pastor Mark said he preached a sermon on this one time, and he held up, you know, it was a pearl of great pride, you know, value. Maybe, maybe it was a pearl the size of a marble. And then Pastor Mark said he painted a bowling ball one time, and said he held it up. It's like, maybe it was this size. We don't know, but it was this treasure, right? Like, this guy found this treasure. It was so valuable. He recognized the value of it instantly, and so so much so that he hid it so nobody else would find it. And then he goes back and buys the field, sells everything that he owns. Nothing else is important as buying that field and this treasure. And that's what Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like. He goes on and he, and he, in verse 45, he says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had and bought it. In both parables, here's the thing. In both of these parables, the main character in this story that Jesus told recognizes the treasure that they found, and then they are willing to absolutely get rid of every possession they own, everything that is important to them, everything that they've accumulated, all of the garage full of stuff, all of the attic full of the cars, boats, land, house, whatever he owned, he was willing to go and sell it for this one treasure. That is, a, that is a treasure of great value. And Jesus said, that is what the kingdom of heaven is like. So here's the thing. We, the first step, so I want to kind of just dissect this a little bit. The first thing you have to do, right, uh, if you're going to understand the kingdom of heaven, is you have to, according to these stories of Jesus, we have to recognize the value of something, right? You, ha- you have to be able to identify that what you have stumbled across in the field or what you've stumbled across in your life is of great value, Right? And it, and it has to resonate with you. Let me show you a picture. I think I have a picture this morning. Oh, it was almost there. There it is. Okay. This is a picture. Has anybody seen this picture? Raise your hand. Some have. Okay. A couple have. Some of you know what this picture is. You would be the one that stumbled across this picture of great value, wouldn't you? Do you have any idea what this picture is? Anybody? How much would you, could I, let's do an auction. How much would you pay for this? $2? Do I hear two? Okay. Guy stumbled across this tin type photo <laughs> at an auction place and purchased it for two dollars. The guy that is fourth from the left is Billy the Kid playing croquet with his regulators. This guy bought this picture for two dollars. It sold at auction for five million. It was a treasure of great price. But most people didn't recognize it. So much so that the store owner had no idea what he had. And he sold this picture. How'd you like to be the guy that sold that picture for $2? Talk about keeping you awake at night, right? You have to, have you ever, have you ever gotten rid of something that, uh, as a kid, and then you found out later, like, you ever see a toy that goes for auction or something, you had, you ever have, some of you have, you may have like a Stretch Armstrong, or, you know, when you're, some of you are like, I don't even know what that is, I'm really old, I turned 53 this week, so, but we had stuff growing up, right, like, you had these toys growing up, and you didn't pay attention to it, you didn't have any idea what it was worth, and anything, and, and you ever do that, and then you find out later, you ever was like, I had one of those, I'll talk to guys who had classic cars, and they're now in their 70s, and they're like, man, I had a, you know, I had a 57 Chevy, I, bought, I paid $2,000 for more, and I'm like, yeah, well, you should have held on to it, right, they have this great treasure, I remember one time, my father-in-law, he was a collector of all things rusty and broken down, and he had this rusty old a vehicle one time, and I'm not, I'm, I'm a, this like haunts me, it's one of the, I, I would have been the guy that sold the picture for two dollars, but I, he had this, he had an international scout, 
I know. I heard a gasp. <laughs> it was Rusty who was sitting in the weeds, and we brought it up here and beat it up with sledgehammers for a fundraiser. I know. <laughs> Somebody just passed out. I, I know. Idiots, right? You don't recognize the value, and that is what Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is like. And some of you are sitting here with a five million, with an opportunity to purchase a five million dollar photo for two dollars, and you're going to pass it up. You're going to let it walk out the door. And Jesus said, "The kingdom of heaven is like that." And you have to be willing, you have to recognize the value of this relationship with Jesus Christ. And the sad thing is, many people will not. They won't. Some of you won't. There's, see, there's two competing values in this world. Is that a conference this week? And one of the speakers said this, and I loved it. He said, there's two competing values in this world. There's the kingdom of God. And then there, there's the kingdom of earth or a worldview. And I think a lot of, most of us have a worldview. But we have a, a, not a great view of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And here's why. Because when you compare the two, they differ. They're like bookends. The kingdom of this earth and the kingdom of God are complete opposites. The kingdom of God values weakness. The kingdom of earth values power. The kingdom of God values sacrifice. The kingdom of this earth values comfort. The kingdom of God values sorrow. The kingdom of this earth values success. The kingdom of God values rejection. The kingdom of this earth values recognition. The kingdom of God values the last. The kingdom of this earth said, I want to be first. The kingdom of God values losing. The kingdom of this earth values winning. I mean, really, who would, who would select that? Like, if, if I put those two things up and said, okay, pick one, and I said, hey, do you want kingdom of God? It's weakness, it's sacrifice, it's sorrow, it's rejection, it's last, it's losing. Who picks that? Nobody picks that. But that's where the value is. It's comfort versus sacrifice. And a word that rose to popularity in the pandemic recently uh, that we all heard a lot was, uh, was some of, we heard a lot of words. Some I can't repeat in church. But one of the words that we heard a lot in church and in, in the pandemic in connection with church and connect with businesses and other things were whether or not they were essential, right? Like, is, is it essential? Is this an essential business? And for a lot, church just wasn't that essential. And to some, the kingdom has become non-essential. Perhaps we've lost sight of what the true kingdom of God is. And it seems that the church in America has become obsessed with the kingdom of earth. We're obsessed with left versus right, Democrat and Republican, red and blue. We're obsessed with who's the president, who's going to be the president. Our hope is resting on some senator or some Supreme Court ruling or some other representative. We have a worldview, not a kingdom view. We've become obsessed with winning at all costs. I'm reading a book by Andy it's Stanley. It's titled Not In It to Win It. And he has a quote in there, and I love it. It says, the church is not here to win. Just the opposite. By every human measure, our Savior lost. Do you realize that? By every human measure, our Savior lost. On purpose, with a purpose. When you look at Jesus' life, his disciples thought, well, we're toast. He lost. Romans won. We're doomed. We're going to hide out in this room. Let me ask you this morning, what value do you place on the kingdom of God personally? 
You answer that question yourself, and only you can answer it. Is it essential? Acts 20, 28 says, So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock. His church purchased with his own blood. This salvation is priceless. You can't put a value on it. All you have to do is recognize the value that's there for you and your family and how it's relative in 2022. The salvation that is freely offered is priceless. And when we fail to understand the value, you miss out on the reward. Ephesians 1, 22 through 23 says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him the head over all things for the benefit of the church. In other words, Jesus is king of this kingdom. And the church is his body. It's made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. The second thing we have to do, you have to understand the value. You have to get to a place in your life where you recognize the value of the kingdom of God. I can't help you with that. If you don't see the value in it, come talk to me. I'll try to help you. <laughs> I'll try to see what you're missing out on. Listen to the stories of these people getting baptized a few minutes from now. Understand, and here's the other thing. When you understand the value, it equals joy. You think that guy was stoked when he realized what picture he had in his hand that he paid $2 for? I bet he was even more stoked when he got the check for $5 million for that picture. <laughs> it motivates us to action, doesn't it? In that passage of scripture that Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven was like, when a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy, because when we find the treasure, when we recognize what Jesus has done for us and we accept his forgiveness and it waves over us and we're like, whoo, that, that's awesome. You feel it. When you find the treasure of a lifetime, you will do anything. Nothing compares. You're willing to give up everything you own to secure it. You are full of joy and that joy motivates us to action. The trick is finding where your treasure is. Matthew chapter 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So my question to you is, where is your treasure? Where are you finding it? Are you finding it in the kingdom of this earth, in the stuff and, and junk and, and whatever, hanging out on the weekend, doing what? I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you're finding your treasure. Or is it in the kingdom of God? Do you have a kingdom view of your treasure? I can just picture this guy being giddy with excitement. He found this treasure. His heart was in him. He found his treasure. He captured it with his heart and it moved him to action. It moved him to do something different. Next question I really want to wrap up here with is how much does it cost me to follow Jesus? How much does it cost me to secure this treasure? And we have to remember that there is, in fact, a cost associated with following Jesus. For us to truly be under Jesus' rule, we have to constantly live a life of sacrifice. Every day we're faced with opportunities for obedience. And sometimes that means being willing to surrender perfectly good things out of love to the Lord. This kingdom, this, this, this kingdom of God, this great treasure that Jesus talks about, when you find it, and I'm, I'm just telling you, it, it could cost you relationships. It could cost you jobs. It could cost you security. And for many throughout history, it cost them their lives. You see these people in Antioch, do you know that Christian, the term Christian was a, was a political term originally? It was, it was defined, it was a political term described to, to, to describe people who followed Jesus. They were called, people who followed Herod were called Herodians. People who, who followed Nero were Neronians. People who followed Jesus were called Christians or little Jesuses is what it meant. It was a political term. 
because there was this group in Antioch. It was the first church. And they just said, hey, you know what? We're going to follow Jesus and not Herod. We're going we're gonna to follow Jesus and we're going to do what he asks us to do. And for many of them, they were used as torches in garden parties being burned alive by Nero. It cost them their life. It cost them everything. You know why? Because they recognized the value in following Jesus. That it trumped absolute everything else in their life. They eliminated, they eliminated their worldview and got a crystal clear kingdom view. And it changed how they lived their daily lives. It motivated them to action. What are some of the sacrifices that we must be willing to make on behalf of the kingdom? And according to Jesus, there's nothing we could give up that is more valuable than the kingdom. And there are far too many within the family of God who treat membership of the body of Christ like it's a hobby. Some sort of civic organization or merely just a weekend exercise that was due on Sundays. So the question is, have we found the treasure at a great price? Have you found it? Did you see it? Are you placing value in this kingdom or in his kingdom? Mark chapter 8 says this, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their own soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? My question to you this morning is, what are you trading for your soul? (laughs) What are you doing? Do you understand the richness and fullness of its value and the price that Jesus paid and the value of your salvation? (laughs) And I think we got extras that want to go. Just want to encourage you this morning. The kingdom of heaven has incredible value. I just want to give you an opportunity. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and pray, and I'm going to pray and let you hear. But if you're somebody here that maybe has felt something or maybe heard something in this story that has moved you to a place where you need to reconsider the value of the kingdom of heaven, I'm going to give you that opportunity, and I just want to pray with you this morning. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for these people that have, that have accepted this great, valuable gift, Lord, this morning, and have said, hey, I want to make a decision uh, in my life, and I want to, it, it has moved me to take action. And Father, I just pray that there's somebody here in this house this morning, uh, all of our mothers and, and all, for whatever reason we're here gathered in this place, God, that your Holy Spirit would move on their heart. And if there's somebody here that maybe in this, just even in the quietness of this moment, would say, God, forgive me of my sins. Help me to accept the value of your kingdom come into my life and change my life. Father, I want to give them that. Maybe there's somebody watching online or, or wherever that is. Lord, you know who they are, and I pray that you would speak to their heart, and Lord, that you would move them to take action in their life, that they would change the way they're living, that they would, through, with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, working in them, they can be different people, and that we can have a clear, crystal clear view of the kingdom of heaven. We thank you for loving us and for providing us with this great treasure. In your precious holy name, I pray. Amen. Hey, thank you for being here. Have a great week. Happy Mother's Day. God bless.